Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This is the second video module on price discrimination. In this module, we will be concerned with a firm selling a single product in two different markets. These markets are distinguished by uh, the elasticity of demand. One market has a, a more elastic demand uh, than the other. The firm faces two issues. One is how much should it produce and then how much of its production level it should, it should sell in each of the two uh, markets. We can deal with these issues in terms of, of a graph that comes directly out of the uh, textbook. Here we have uh, two markets. We can just identify them as market A and market uh, B. On the right hand side we have a graph for uh, the firm. In, in this graph, we have the firm's marginal uh, cost curve. That small lettering uh, does not show up uh, very well on camera. Now, the demand in market A is much more elastic than the demand uh, in market B. How does the firm decide how much it's going to produce? Well, as all firms will, it will produce where the marginal cost of the last unit is equal to the marginal uh, revenue of the uh, last unit. To get the marginal revenue curve, we could, in fact, think in terms of horizontally summing uh, these two demand curves, demand for market A, demand for market B, and we would get a demand curve over here. And then from this combined demand curve, we could get a marginal revenue curve. Instead of summing the demand curves, all we really need to do is sum the uh, marginal uh, revenue curves. So at, a, at any price above of this point here, uh, the only marginal revenue curve that you have is in market B, so that's why uh, you have a kind of narrow uh, marginal revenue curve then. Then it begins to expand out simply because we are horizontally uh, summing uh, these distances here, and we come up with this marginal uh, revenue curve. Well, the firm should produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, which is here, which means that the firm should produce uh, quantity uh, QM. Now the question is, is how much should it, it um, uh, sell in market A and, and market B? Well, we know that in order for the firm to maximize uh, its profits, the marginal revenue from the uh, last unit sold in, in market A must be equal to the marginal revenue of the last unit sold uh, in B. That's the basic rule of the allocation of the uh, production. Now, if that were not the case, if, in fact, the marginal revenue of the last unit sold in A uh, were greater than the marginal revenue of the last unit sold in B, then the firm could simply shift its allocation. It could move um, a unit from B, say, and lose $10, and go over to uh, A and gain uh, $15. The result is that without any more production, it could raise its profits by uh, $5. Well, the moral of the story is, that as more units are sold in, in uh, A, the marginal revenue is going to come down along with the price, and the marginal revenue of the last unit in B is going to go up. Why? Because we're selling fewer units in, in B, and we're raising the price of that. Well, as it happens, uh, this means that um, the firm should produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, which is going to be equal to marginal revenue of A, which is equal to the marginal revenue of of uh, B. And that means if the firm allocates its, its production such that it sells quantity QB in market B and quantity uh, QA in market A, it will have maximized uh, uh, its, its profits. And by the way, quantity QA plus quantity QB is uh, going to equal the output level Q. Uh, M. The reason is that we got this point on the um, uh, marginal revenue curve when we got QM by simply summing uh, QA and uh, QB. The firm must now decide how much it's going to um, uh, sell these quantities for in the two markets. Well, it can sell quantity QA uh, at a price uh, equal to uh, PA. It can sell quantity QB at a price of, of PB. Notice 
that uh, you get a result that might be expected. That is, in the market where you have a less elastic demand, I mean a more elastic demand, you have a lower price than in the market where you have a, uh, a more inelastic uh, demand. Uh, it follows that uh, if you have a set of unresponsive consumers to price changes and a set of consumers that are highly responsive, then of course you should allocate your production such that you charge the consumers who are unresponsive to the price a higher price than those who are very responsive to the price. And uh, one reason senior citizens uh, uh, get discounts at many restaurants and, and other business establishments is that seniors have a lot, oftentimes have a lot of uh, time on their hands to check out prices. Uh, they know about prices, they know where the lower prices are, uh, and because many of them are on low incomes, they can and are uh, more price sensitive. So in, in terms of this graph, uh, the senior citizens are like over here in market A and uh, market B or, or younger uh, adults. Uh, we have observed uh, that uh, textbook prices uh, in the United States are sometimes 50% higher than they are in the United Kingdom. One reason for that uh, can be uh, that the elasticity of demand uh, for textbooks in the United States is represented by market uh, B. The demand for textbooks in, the, in Great Britain uh, can be represented by uh, market A. Now, of course, these, two, these markets must be kept separate. If, if uh, the producer can't keep them separate, then you can imagine that those um, uh, people who uh, can buy the textbook at a lower price in one market will start reselling those, those books uh, in another market. Uh, in the case of textbooks, uh, these markets may no longer be uh, able to be kept se separate. Uh, students have realized that they can go to Amazon UK and buy their textbooks in the United uh, Kingdom. That is, students in the United States can buy their textbooks in the United uh, Kingdom. Uh, as a consequence, the demand for textbooks in, from U, U, U.S. suppliers uh, can go down along with their prices. The demand for textbooks in the U.K. can be expected to go up along with the, the prices of textbooks uh, there. Uh, so when the markets cannot be uh, kept separate, uh, there will be forces uh, set afoot uh, to equalize uh, those prices. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.